Okay, so let's continue with our relations and functions. We are on range of a function. Range of a function. So the range is defined as a set of values of a dependent variable y. Dependent variable. Meaning this y depends on x. Which makes the independent, which means this x does not depend on the y. Defined. Again. The range is defined as a set of values of the dependent variable y, which makes the independent variable of x defined. So, how do we solve range questions? You first equate the function to y. That's the first thing. Equate function to y. So, implication. I have y equals 1 minus 2x. I'm done with that. And the next one is that you make x the subject. Make x the subject. Right, so I have y, okay, I can go this way. I have 2x equals 1 minus y. You see, I carry this over here, okay? Good. So I have 2x over 2, 1 minus y over 2. x equals what? 1 minus y all over what? 2. Good. Now, after this, what do you do? Now, look at the definition again. The range is defined as a set of values for the dependent variable y, which makes this independence undefined. So, there are some values of y which will render this function math error, syntax error, or undefined. You see that? So, the range is written in terms of what? y, not x. Right? It's written in terms of y, not x. So, is there any value here that can destroy this or make it undefined? Check. Okay, what is zero? Why is zero? That's one over two. It's defined. Negative. It's still defined. Right? So the range. Why is such that why belongs to all set of real numbers? That's all. Why did I define the range in terms of y and not x? Look at the definition once again. The set of values of the dependent variable y, which will make this. So you see, it is this value which will cause a problem for this. Do you understand? Good. That's why the range is defined in terms of what? Y. Okay. Okay. Now let's go to our second question. Still on range of a function, right? So find a range in this. So the steps, once again, you first equate the function to y. Equate function to y. Okay. That is good. The next is make x the subject. We are going to make x the subject, right? Over here. Let's make x the subject, right? So, you can see some cross multiply here, right? Good. So, I think y goes with this, and I have this cross multiply. We move together, right? So, I have y minus xy equals 1 plus x. How to make x the subject? I have x here, I have x here. Now, which of the x should I make? Should I make this a subject and leave this? No. Why don't you put all the x together? and get a representative for them. That's the best thing to do. So this one will come in like this. This will move. Agreed. Now all the x are qualified to meet the subject. So we have to put them together, right? And just ask one person to represent. X goes here one. X goes here y. That is y minus y, right? Y minus one equals what? I have to divide through by this. Just to set my x free. Now that is y minus 1 over 1 plus y equals what? x. Now how do you define the range? Range. Y is such that. No. Okay, I'm not done. It is a rational function. So we have to continue by doing this. Let's go. So it's a rational function, guys. Take notes. To state a domain or whatever, we use the denominator. Do you remember? 
Okay. So I will equate the denominator to zero, right? Equate the denominator to zero. And why are we doing this? We are dealing with what we call rational functions, right? If this was just the first one that we did, fine, it just goes straight, right? This is a rational function. Can't just put it in. So that is 1 plus y equals what? 0. y equals negative 1. So the range. All numbers are okay. The subjects, okay? So y is such that y belongs to all set of real numbers except that y should not be equal to what? Negative 1. That is a range. Okay. Finding the inverse of a function. The function j of the real variable x is defined as what you see here. So they are telling you here that x should not be equal to minus 3. That is not part of the question, right? It is just something for you. Find the inverse function g inverse of j. You all know inverse, right? There is 2. There is 2 inverse. So there is 2. 2 is on 1. Right? That is inverse of 2. So the inverse has to do with just interchanging something, right? Turning something around. That's inverse. Good. So that is exactly the same thing we are going to do here. Solution to the problem. Now, I will first equate the function to y as usual. Let's understand this function to y. So I am equating y equals 1 over x plus 3. Now the next step is to interchange x and y. Why are we interchanging? If 2 is 2 over 1 and the inverse of 2 is 1 over 2. Ah, so I'm interchanging. Right? You just want to interchange against something, that's all. So interchange so that we can just get our inverse. That is why we are doing this, okay? Good. Interchange x and y. So let's go. We have x here. Whenever I see x, I check in y. I'm done with that. Now the next step, you now make y the subject, right? Make y the subject. Make y the subject. Good. So I have to cross multiply first. Remember? So I'll make y the subject. So I have x, y plus 3 equals 1. This way, that way. So I have x, y plus 3 equals 1. 3x. 3x. Oh, okay. Plus 3x equals 1. Equals 1. So I want to make y the subject, right? So I want to maintain this. Throw this over there just to make the y free. The y is still not free. I have to divide through by x. Now my y is free, as you can see. How do I get my inverse after interchanging everything? It means you have ended up in the final zone when you interchange, right? You didn't come back. So indirectly, j inverse becomes what? This. So that is the answer.